Okay, I'm uh, Cheda Maksimovic. It's not the name you hear every day. I'm professor at the Imperial College in London, which is, as you know, one of the leading global world leading universities. I'm professor at the uh, Civil and Mental Engineering Department, and I'm heading the Urban Water Research Group. At the same time, I'm editing Urban Water Journal, Urban Water Book series, and a few other research projects. And we're going to talk about the Blue Green Dream. Um, and in the context of managing water in our cities, what is the problem with the current design philosophy? Well, current design philosophy is inherited from the past, and uh, London was leading uh, uh, in terms of the in new philosophy of sanitation of the cities, and we know that uh, saved London many times in the past. But the situation has changed. This old infrastructure done in the Victorian period, which was the world class and probably still working properly, has to be improved, a pro, uh, uh, um, kind of retrofitted and redesigned in many aspects, especially new designs have been done differently. So uh, what is wrong, I wouldn't say what's wrong, but it, it, it is simply not fit for the future because future, future is not what it used to be. <laughs> they say future is not what it used to be, meaning that we have to do things differently in order to survive. It's a matter of survival, it's not a matter of whether you like it or not. It's the, not only climate change, climate change is kind of taking place, but it's the weather extremes which make a really big impact on us and it is hitting us badly. Not us, but all over the world. Um, and this philosophy, does it, this new philosophy, does it apply only to new build? Uh, no, philosophy applies equally well to new build as well as retrofitting, because new build uh, are happening, but uh, existing cities have to be adapted for the climate change, it has to be more resilient, and this philosophy also deals with the retrofitting of the existing cities. So, why is the blue-green dream, or the BGD, or not BGD, the question? Yeah. Well, uh, the answer is, it is not the question. Uh, Hamlet told that is, it is the question now, but to be GD or not to be GD, we say it's our slogan, it's not the question. One way or the other, every single house, every single street, garden, park, every single uh, development and city and country and region will have to go through this exercise one way or the other. You call it uh, differently, but uh, I've faced significant, a uh, big number of times during last year, we're speaking to people telling the same story. I say, goodness me, these people have copied my project. No, it's not just simple, logical way of perception of the future. You have to do things differently. And uh, we've have heard a similar story from people from Taiwan and many others. It is simple philosophy that you have to stop doing in a silo or piecemeal fashion. You have to think laterally and in integrative fashion. And um, could you um, elaborate on the key words that are involved in the BGD philosophy? Well, we have a few key words. First of all, uh, it's the interaction. We started with interaction with the water infrastructure, it's kind of blue component, and uh, uh, urban green vegetated areas. But soon, as, we, as soon as we started, we see that there are many other interactions which you have to take into account, because interaction with water green spaces, you can reduce flood and uh, uh, deal with the uh, droughts, but then immediately it impacts on the energy efficiency, on the air quality, on pollution uh, of water and flood and, and so on, uh, healthy cities, uh, standard of living. So it practically tackles all the urban uh, ecosystem services, all the aspects of the human life and industrial and economical activities in cities. So it is, key word is interaction. And interaction has to be taken into account where planning for the future, planning new developments and planning for the retrofitting of the existing uh, cities. And the key words relevant to organizations involved in this, separate organizations involved? Well, uh, uh, in the organizations, it depends which, if it is governmental or if it is uh, uh, commercial or developers or building, they all have some, they should have their own, develop their own agenda on this, and they should develop their own strategy and, and philosophy. But uh, uh, for example, for the governments, I think governments at the central level, at the regional level, at the city level, at the local area level, have to have vision, have to have a strategy, long-term strategy, which stretches not only till the next election, it, it stretches few election period, 
And once you have this vision and strategy, then you can easily fit into short-term goals. Unfortunately, there is, in many cases, there is no such a vision, and people are dealing just uh, day by day, extinguishing fires instead of uh, uh, preventing fires from happening. Thank you. Um, and now, um, uh, following on from your lecture, uh, a phrase that I liked, the term flooding tourism. Could you explain that to us? <laughs> well, it's not uh, only flooding tourism. Whenever there is a natural disaster or catastrophe, you see a lot of top-level people going there. It's good. They want to see the people they are taking care of and so on. However, often the impact of their visits is not as if it would be if they had a vision, if they had an agenda that they are not just promising something, okay, don't worry, we will solve your problem short and we'll give you so many millions to solve this problem, dredging, blah, blah, blah. Solving problem doesn't work like that. Solving problem is having a vision and starting implementing this vision strategy in an organized and integrated fashion. And then you start solving these problems. Otherwise, just you are extinguishing. And this is not flooding tourism. You see, I've seen it in, in the earthquake tourism and they say the, the, the riot tourism and the, all these things. I'm not blaming these people. The politicians have to be there and they have to make sure that people understand they're taken care of. But the help they get is not long term. It's, 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 the, it's, it's the kind of short term or, or, or no help at all. You use the word integration. Yeah. Integration, there are various types of integration. You have to have integration. You can have an integration at the philosophical level, kind of concept, paradigm level, how you think of the various aspects of the city development. You have integration between different infrastructure systems. You have integration between different tools, models, because at the moment we have a lot of brilliant models, but they do with the air quality, with the atmospheric processes, with the flooding, separate. Integration is we have to look how these processes impact on each other and how we quantify, how we, with the limited resources, can solve more than one problem. And this is integration also financial, political, technical, social. We have to integrate different uh, uh, social groups in the cities, more vulnerable, less vulnerable, and so on. So no one size, uh, one solution fits all? No, no, no. We have to think uh, really in an integrated fashion and they have to see what are all the interactions and then we have to, we cannot of course uh, address all of them at the same time with limited resources but we have to find out which of them are most severe where we can easily solve problem with the resource which we have at the moment kind of what they call low hanging fruits you can do a lot but the, whatever you do now has to be part of the long term strategy otherwise you can do something now and create problem for tomorrow and then, then you are simply wasting your resources okay. and um uh, we're, uh, very topical at the moment, the subject of SUDS and WASADS. Uh, how does that all fit into uh, the Blue Green Dream? SUDS, uh, to, uh, for the people who are listening, stands for Sustainable Urban Drainage Systems. When it was coined, I was part of that team with the Black and Beach and uh, under Syria coordination and few other uh, academics and uh, industrial partners. SUDS was coined about 17, 18 years and it was a big step forward. Instead of just let the stormwater flood and uh, pollute our rivers, it was an attempt to collect this water, to store it, to reduce peak flows, to reduce flood risk, to improve water quality, to reduce pollution of rivers, and to create amenities and so on. And it was a great concept. However, with all these climate changes and weather extremes, it is already, I wouldn't say up outdated, it is simply superseded by more comprehensive. It, it still can be implemented, but as a part of the more comprehensive solutions. Perfect. And um, a, a question related to that. Could you explain centralized and decentralized systems and whether that's a common and up-to-date uh, philosophy? Well, a centralized and decentralized system exists in every, in many big systems. Energy can be centralized, water, wastewater. In this particular case, we are to, uh, let's say water, for example, you can have centralized systems. We have one big treatment plant and distribute water to the whole city. Then you collect all this water and you treat it in one single place. That is current philosophy and it works. It's efficient, it's cost effective and so on. However, it also starts to show weak elements and simply it would not in the future work centralized only. Probably future will be a combination of decentralized with a lot of elements of decentralized. California at the moment is facing severely water shortage problem and they are uh, some of the California leading universities have been given hundreds of millions of research money to 
develop the strategy for California water management in the future and then the solution they're coming up with is kind of decentralized things, decentralized water resources because you have no more natural resources to bring huge amount of water to the city and then throw it away. You have to rely on decentralization. You can capture a lot of water from your roof. You can recycle a lot of water from your home. You don't have to throw away water after taking a shower. This water is nicely fit for flushing toilet. Flushing toilets are 30-40% of the consumption. So decentralized system is just at the level of one single house. You can do a lot by creating your own resources and recycling resources and putting less pressure on these big central systems which are at the brink of collapse. They are already collapsing in Texas, in California these days as we speak. It collapsed in, in the southeast England last year and it's going to collapse more and more frequently. So decentralization is a concept which will help us to survive simply because central systems are good, they work, but they simply they are not they cannot solve all our future problems. They will stay in place, but they will have to be combined with a lot of decentralized systems. But whatever you do, do not do it in a single-minded way. Do it laterally. That was a quote from your earlier talk. Could you explain what you mean by that? Well, uh, uh, current philosophy, and I'm not blaming it, it's simply, uh, I was, when I was a student, uh, civil engineer, water engineer, I would thought like that, this prevailing philosophy. You do your part of your profession correctly, and that's it. Architects, their, their part, urban planners, their part, energy people, water, uh, transportation, everybody does the best they can. And there was no much in the past, no much interactions, even in the same company, in the same design office, in the same uh, a report of the same development you have seen the parts, corporate energy, water, heating, cooling, and then often if you look at the cross-cutting, there's no much link between them, and often they come with solutions which are even conflicting, with, even with the same project, the same coming from the same consulting company. So these interactions or lateral thinking is a need that first of all people talk to each other, they understand what other language, and they come up with the solutions where whatever you do, you see how it impacts on your next door neighbor, on your next door system, and so on. I was, I wasn't to mention the country recently, a few weeks ago, in a well-developed, maybe one of the richest countries in the world, and I was promoting this Blue Grid Dream, I say, everybody who I spoke, I say, this is excellent, we will adopt it, but can you help us to bring, organize a meeting, we will give you three months time, organize a meeting of leading water specialists in our country, leading architect, leading city planner, leading landscape architect. If you succeed to bring them to sit in the same room for two hours and agree that this is a good concept, don't worry about implementation, money is not an issue. Simply say we have never succeeded, we have never maybe even tried to bring these people together to speak and to agree on the same concept. They are brilliant, they are biggest, they are big names in the country, uh, running their own show, but never thought of interactions. So just um, with the last question, could you um, explain who's leading this uh, thinking and, in, and implementing it? Well, uh, there are again different levels of leading. Uh, as for the project itself, it's kind of my, my, my baby, my, my, my uh, uh, latest uh, project. As you can see, I have been using the wrong shampoo and my color has changed because of that. So I've been working with water problems for years and years. And I realized that now it's finally it's time to do something more uh, long-term, more integrated, more interaction. And this uh, idea was born. I worked with my colleagues from uh, leading uh, European technical universities in Paris, uh, Berlin, uh, Delft. And uh, we also brought on board uh, some of the leading uh, consulting companies and some of the small architectural bureaus who are kind of in the front line. So we are kind of leading this project. But we have a very enthusiastic uh, uh, a kind of, I wouldn't say followers, but colleagues who want to implement it. We are creating six or actually five uh, regional centers in Europe for blue green for Scandinavia, for Central Europe, Western Mediterranean, Eastern Mediterranean, Northeast Europe. And they are uh, not only adopting and implementing, but also they are uh, kind of adapting to their own climate conditions, socio-economical conditions, uh, uh, environmental and so on. For example, the situation is not the same in the North Africa 
as in Scandinavia. And they, the philosophy is the same, principles are the same, but the local conditions are the same. So we have to adapt and change these tools to fit the local. So uh, at the moment, we have this uh, core team from uh, uh, France, Germany, Netherlands, and the UK. They're kind of leading the project. It is under Climate Kick. Climate, climate Kick is uh, Kick stands for Knowledge Innovative Communities. It's part of the European program of the EIT, Institute uh, uh, of um, Innovation, uh, uh, Institute of Innovation uh, Technologies, and uh, that is part of the project. But however, we cannot do it ourselves. We have to work together with the planners. Particularly, planners are very important. Special planners are very important people. They should. And they already work, we have working. We are working already with quite a lot of them. They are the first frontline runners. Once they accept the philosophy, start implementing new projects, the retrofit, then it starts happening. But we have also not to forget that we have to enable this environment. We have to speak with the top-level politicians and governments. They have to change the legal frameworks to enable this philosophy. They have to introduce very important incentives. Why should people do that if they don't understand? Because there have to be some motivation. So we have to educate people. Ministers don't want to be educated, so we want to brief them. <laughs> we are ready to brief, we want to educate, to brief, whatever is needed to spread this gospel. Thank you very much.